Hey guys, this is Democracy 3. I've played some Democracy 2 and I watched Quill uh, 18 play some Democracy 3, although only one game. So I'm going to give it a shot. Um, unlike Quill, I like to play games at their hardest difficulty because, hey, if the designers made it possible to play at the hardest difficulty, then that's what they wanted me to do, right? So we'll go for some America up in here and go for five-year terms and no term limit and set difficulty to maximum and be a Republican against a Democrat and go. So in this game, it's very similar to SimCity, except for, uh, you know, not as action-oriented, right? You're basically just trying to balance some sliders. So in SimCity, you're, you're balancing three sliders, right? Industrial demand and commercial demand and residential demand, uh, while also trying to balance your budget. And then you're balancing the happiness slider versus your budget and so on and so forth. And so it's it's just a game about balancing sliders. It's a game about problem solving, which is great because I am a problem solver by trade. My my profession is professional problem solver. I work for IBM as a computer programmer, and that's all programmers do, and that's what I like doing. That's what I always like doing. And so games like this appeal to me. Uh, they don't appeal to everyone. If you are not a professional problem solver, you might not like this game. Anyway, we have 316 million citizens relying on us to kick some butt. Our education is good. We have a little bit of poverty, but no big deal. We've got a lot of crime and a pretty high amount of unemployment and um, a pretty crappy GDP. Now we're going to start the game with a $1 trillion income and $1.5 trillion uh, expenditures for a $500 billion deficit and a $3.6 trillion debt. Now if our debt goes above $5 trillion, we lose the game. Um, I mean, we don't so much lose the game as it triggers an event that causes spiraling out of control deadness, and then you lose the game. Okay, so that's the first thing that we have to try to balance. Don't go above $5 trillion in debt. The next thing you have to balance, if any one of these groups... Okay, you see in the middle how it says socialist in the at the top left of that box, and it's kind of shaded. I'm trying to point at it, but when I mouse over it, it changes it, so... You see how the, it's shaded? The shaded amount is what percentage of your population is a socialist. So it's how important this slider is, okay? So since it's about in the middle, about half of our population identifies as socialist, and that means the opinion of socialists is extremely important. Now, it's not just important for re-election, although it is important for re-election. It's also important because you can be assassinated if you piss off any group with a large uh, population. So Nick wants to talk to me, and I'm going to close this. Bye-bye. All right. Anyway, so uh, if this gets down to the red, then they're going to fund some terrorists. These are the terrorist groups, okay? And all these terrorist groups already have a pretty high membership because I'm playing on the hardest difficulty. So there are 5 million people that constantly protest saying that the wildlife must be protected or... Um, Heritage, whatever the heck that is, that's lib libertarian. That's like too many, too many police with guns, and they're infringing on my civil liberties and nonsense. And the Church of Christ is, you know, um, religion complaints, and 18 million people are worried about human rights. Okay, these people, uh, the membership of these groups tells you how many people care about this issue enough to join one of these groups, but none of them are a threat to you. See how the threat is nothing. Now, when the these groups start to become a threat, the green bar goes up, and every quarter, uh, every turn, if the green bar of one of these groups is too high, then it joins this uh, red red group, and then they try to kill you. So you don't want anyone in these groups, and the way that you prevent people from going to that groups is watching these sliders. So right now, trade unionists are pretty red, so next turn we're probably going to have some terrorists trying to kill us from the trade unionist party. Same for parents. They don't like the fact that uh, we're letting their children have asthma and, and do drugs. Ethnic minorities tend to become a problem if you don't mess with border controls and citizenship tests. And liberals, the ones that I always have trouble with are liberals and capitalists. Um, because uh, you start out with this huge debt, which means you have to raise taxes and lower, lower spending. And that pisses off... Uh, capitalists who don't like paying taxes <laughs> and it pisses off 
liberties when you fight crime because even though liberals are very against crime like they they are very pro judicial system they they love every penny you spend on prisons and on rehabilitating criminals and stuff um what they hate is the enforcement of crime by having the police you know pat them down and ask them why they own so many guns and stuff like that so you got to be careful about pissing off liberals and and capitalists that's that's our general goal here so um in order to Oh, this is my overall popularity. It's super low, but it's gonna it's gonna stay low until we get out of debt. Like I said, we have three point six trillion dollars of debt. Once we get to five trillion, we lose the whole game. So the whole country is worried about this giant debt that whoever came before me put us into. So first thing we need to do is look at why we're in, in so much debt. First is our income. Where is our income coming from? It's mostly coming from income tax, sales tax, and corporate tax. And where's our money going? All of it's going to the military and state pensions. So what we're gonna do is cut the military budget and the state pension budget because that's the biggest bang for the buck as far as cutting things and we're going to double income tax and maybe more than double income tax and and sales tax and corporate tax and capital gains now what this is going to do is it's going to ruin the long-term profitability of the entire country over here in gdp right here this is our gdp uh, gross domestic product it's the average amount of money that each citizen earns and it's going to go way down when we raise taxes because the people will earn the same amount of money but then they'll give a bunch of it to me <laughs> so they won't earn as much money and that's sad but if we don't balance the budget we lose so we got to do it um so in order to balance the budget we're gonna go to right here this percentage sign that's uh, income tax another way to get there is you can click up here under income and then click on the highest income value and now we get to income tax and we need to raise this slider to about 1.2 trillion dollars okay and that's a big deal um, the biggest impact that this has is it upsets middle income people which we don't care about too much because middle income people don't join terrorist groups and it upsets capitalists, which we care about a great deal more because they do join terrorist groups. So it's unfortunate that we need, that we need to piss off capitalists, but we need to balance the budget. So that's our first step. We're going to do that. But as you can see, it says that it costs 30 political capital to do this, and we only have 26. So we can't do it this turn. Um, now we need to look at how much political capital we're going to have next turn so that we get exactly 26. I mean 30. Um, right now we have 26 and we'll get 26 more for a total of 52. You can see because the maximum is only 50, two of it would have just been wasted if I ended my turn right now. Uh, but our goal is to have 30 political capital next turn. So because we're gaining 26 per turn, we want to have four political capital at the end of this turn and maybe five just in case, uh, something goes wrong. So we want to spend 21 political capital on something else. So let's raise one of the other taxes, maybe sales tax. Let's see if we can raise sales tax for 21 or less um, political capital. No, it costs 26. What about corporate tax? That We can do that. All right, so uh, raising corporate tax uh, makes socialists happy because they're socialists, seriously. Uh, it makes capitalists sad. And again, capitalists are the people we got to watch around here because we're going to make them very sad with everything we do and they might shoot us in the face for doing so. It makes the wealthy people sad, it makes self-employed people sad, and mo most importantly, it reduces your GDP. Um, your, your GDP because it takes money away from your citizens. So if we put it way up here, it's just a massive hit to GDP. Now GDP is like the, the key thing. In all of, all of the game, it's the most important thing. Um, if, you, if you hinder your GDP too much, you also lose. So uh, we want to raise this as high as we can while not hindering GDP. So right there. And that's going to leave us with seven political capital so that next turn we'll have enough to raise the other taxes as well. This is going to earn us about $60 billion per turn. Um, whoop. Good times. And now we're going to go to the next turn. Debt protection law. Um, debt collection agencies take advantage of poor people by loaning them money they can't pay back. Uh, you know that John Green guy? I love him. I love all of his YouTube video-y type things. I've never read any of his books, but he's, he's really cool. He does Crash Course World History and, and stuff like that. Um, he was saying that he bought a house he couldn't afford when the subprime mortgage lending thing happened. I was like, wow, I just assumed <laughs> that only... <laughs> 
only foolish people made such mistakes. But anyway, um, libertarians are one of the groups that we're going to piss off by fighting crime, by um, prisoner tagging and uh, maybe um, cameras, cameras that watch you commit crimes and stuff. So we want to try to make them happy in other ways. And one way you can make them happy is to not limit the freedom of ridiculous debt collectors to, to, to screw over your citizens. Also, capitalists are very happy when you don't limit the freedom of banks to take advantage of stupid people. So this is, uh, I, I would click this if, if I had the best interest of my, of my people at heart, but if the government goes under due to economic reasons, then nobody's going to benefit. So we're going we're gonna to appease the liberals and the, and the, and the, um, the capitalists by doing something that's just really stupid. Let's see. I guess the liberals didn't have an opinion on this. All right. And we're going to repeal some of this stuff. We'll probably repeal um, prisoner tagging. I don't like the idea of prisoner tagging. It's minus 20 to, to liberalism and plus 10 to crime. And that's just not a good ratio, man. Where you can do things like community outreach that are, that are much better. All right. So we've got 33. We need to raise income tax. Income tax. Um... We need to raise it until we're profitable and then some because we need to pay down the debt because every turn we're actually spending a bunch of money to pay off the interest on the on the debt. Where is it? Debt interest. 4% of our budget is, is debt interest. And that's ridiculous. Um, so right now we're making $1.1 billion. We need to make $500 billion more. Uh, so we need to make this much money. And we'll go a little bit past that because why not make even more money, right? So right here seems reasonable. 1.1 trillion. And that's because this you'll, you'll notice when you take a slider and you go from the bottom to the top, everything kind of increases and decreases at a steady rate here for a little while. And then as soon as you hit a certain point, it looks very different. Or from here to here is just very different. So you always want to stop right before that point. Okay? Nice. So this upsets the capitalists, and we're very sad about that, but whatever. Oops. I want to go. I want to upset them a little bit more. You got to upset them at least a little bit more. All right. Now, this is new ideas. So it shows in, in red the things you can't afford, and in green the things you can't afford. So because we have no political capital, that means the only things we can, can afford are things that are free, and I'm all about free things. So we're going to do telecommuting, which pays people to uh, incentivizes businesses to allow their employees to stay home, which is just genius. And then we're going to do community policing, which is just community outreach. Basically, you fight crime for free. Like, who wouldn't want to fight fi crime for free? It costs us $20 billion, um, and it reduces crime by 6%. And it increases liberalism, which is one of the things we worry most about. And it decreases racial, racial tension, which is another of the things that we worry most about. Um, racial tension, liberalism, and, and capitalism are the things we need to fight. Um, cool. So ethnic minorities, these guys, they like to shoot me in the face. Um, okay. So the next one we want to do is boop, 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 boop. Okay, and you're just going to have to trust me that it's hard to to win on the hardest difficulty of this game because it's going to look easy because I played it a hundred times until I could, could win. <laughs> but it's not easy. All right. Good. So next turn, we will have a profitable government. Good old profitable government. I don't like banning anything because liberals hate me. Um, all right, so the security report says no one's trying to kill us quite yet. We've got 25 political capital, and we've got no ministers that are super terrible, although two of them are starting to get more and more terrible. Um, we're earning a little bit of money, although I'd, I'd like to earn a lot more. The next thing that we really want to tackle is the petrol tax, and you can see it costs 36, and we have 25, and we're going to gain 25 next turn for a total of 50. So we can spend 14 on something. Uh, I think capital gains tax costs 7. So we'll we'll raise this until it starts to look like it impacts people negatively. Watch that capitalist bar, this bar right here. 
it doesn't it seems to increase at a non-linear rate like it's going up it's going up it's going up and then at the end it goes up well, i think a little bit faster right about right, right about 35 percent. so we'll go to 35 percent and we will be happy with that um that leaves us with seven more to spend in order to get 36 next turn uh so what can we spend seven on that's um, law and order racial discrimination costs two. This is important because uh, it reduces racial tension and it makes improves the happiness of ethnic minorities by 30% and it makes liberals happy. Like two of the groups that we really need to make happy, this, this works great for. So we're, we're all about that one. Um, and now we've got, I think, five more to spend. So... There's one under welfare that was really good. Is it child care? No. Welfare fraud. Now this is silly. Welfare fraud, right? It costs you $3 billion to earn nothing, right? You don't earn a single penny from it. But it makes uh, middle income people happy. And we're upsetting them so much by basically stealing all their money that anything that makes them it makes them happy is fine with me. Um, okay, so that leaves us with just enough so that next turn we can enact a petrol tax. Petrol, because they call gas petrol around here. Stress dynamic credit rating, rating downgraded. Um, we have a $74 billion surplus. Why are they downgrading our credit rating? All right. So if you tax it all the way up, as you can see, it makes anyone who drives a car extremely mad at you. But you can go all the way to here without upsetting anyone. Um, and this reduces the number of people who will own their own car. It in reduces the amount of money that people who have to drive to work instead of taking the bus will make at their jobs. But it doesn't reduce GDP, and it has a positive effect on the environment. So there's just no reason not to raise the tax to this point. Going beyond this point is questionable because you start to impact GDP, and you start to impact motorist happiness and stuff. But I will go to, to here... Let's see. The difference between not upsetting motorists and upsetting motorists is about $50 billion. I'm willing to upset some motorists for $50 billion. So there we go. And now we're out of political capital again. Now next turn, we're only going to get 24. You can see each turn we get one less because we're in the political honeymoon phase where we just got elected and everyone's willing to trust us to change things. Um, after that honeymoon phase ends, then you start to get less and less political capital and you have to reshuffle your cabinet and stuff. Once you choose certain groups to piss off, then your cabinet, anyone who's in that group, starts to not work very well for you anymore. Um, child labor law, there's an urgent question. Yeah, I don't like child labor. I'm not a big fan. Although criminalizing anything makes capitalists upset, so I probably should have thought twice about that. But whatever. And the security briefing says no one's trying to kill us yet. This is the first time, actually. I've played this game through until I've been assassinated like six times. And I only played it through once without getting assassinated and only past the first election. So uh, I'm basically just doing exactly what I did in that playthrough. And so the fact that no one's trying to kill me is, is insane to me. Because in every other playthrough, people were trying to kill me willy-nilly. All right, so liberals are unhappy, but not the end of the worldy type unhappy. Capitalists also quite unhappy. Ethnic minorities are quite happy. I've I've always had them try to kill me in the past, but not this time. Trade unionists will tend to tr try to kill me because you know they're trade unionists, and that's going the way of the dodo in America. Um, and there's nothing I can do to change the way the wind blows. But look at this, we're making 1.7 trillion and we're spending 1.6 trillion, so we'll eventually pay down the debt at this rate. But we need to increase the rate even more because it's ridiculous to, to make only such a small amount of money. So let's defund the military down to light defense or well-trained. I can't decide. Let's see. Okay. So... Having a huge military massively fights unemployment, and that's great. Um, but do we really want to fight unemployment by basically having a bunch of people pay a bunch of other people? It doesn't... Like, in this game, there are no wars. So what's the point in a military, you know? Like, if, if this were real life, I would understand why you want a military, but this is not real life. So patriotism isn't big on my list of things to care about. And liberals are people we want to make happy. So liberals are completely happy 
right here at well-trained. They're like, I understand why you want to have a well-trained military, but p spending any more than that is going to upset me very much. Very much so, very much. Um, Patriots want our military to be slightly better than well-trained. Like, they want one point or $170 billion, whereas liberals want 120 And the people that don't want very much money to be spent are the people that I like best, right? Um... This will upset Patriots too much, I think. Let's go for well-trained. I don't know. Last time I went for well-trained, and I, I regretted it. I wished I had lowered it more, but... Um, because I had a huge unemployment employment problem. Um, but I think you have a huge unemployment problem no matter what when you reduce the GDP by as much as I have to in order to balance the budget. So, nothing I can do. Next turn, we're going to try to reduce the state pensions, which is going to cost us 26. We are earning uh, 4 plus 23, so we should have just enough to do that, which is awesome. So we cut the two biggest expenses and raised the two biggest incomes and introduced a petrol tax that's even more income, which is great. And now everything is, is, is buoyant. So Rose Allen is well-known patriot. When you say the word patriot, I always pick the other guy because I don't like pissing off the foreigners when you piss off the un the the foreign countries then anyone who immigrates into your country is immediately a little bit mad at you and i don't like that because they try to kill me and i don't like being killed uh security briefing says nobody is angry enough to start burning houses so capitalists are not super angry liberals are not super angry and ethnic minorities the three that i'm watching are not super angry and parents and trade unionists are angry but they will be happy with me later on because i'm i'm all about helping parents especially like asthma epidemic as soon as that's gone parents are basically 100 percent happy um so we wanted to reduce the second biggest expenditure Whoop. we're not going to give people pensions because we want old people to die on the streets uh because that's good for the budget man it's good for the budget so the plan is once we've completely paid down the debt to zero then we'll reintroduce state pensions because we don't actually want old people to die in the streets but there's a certain number of old people that are just going to have to take one for the team until we've paid down our, our deficit um and this would never work in the real world because old people vote at like a 100 percent turnout whereas everyone else votes at 50 percent turnout in america so you can't you can't cut their pensions. That's just not a good idea. But in this game, everybody votes at about 51% turnout, so it's fine. It's totally fine. See, look, retire pe retired people used to love me because of my state pensions, and now that I'm cutting them, they're like, oh, we don't love you anymore. It's ever so sad, ever so sad. All right, so now we have zero political capital. There's nothing left to do, and we'll go to the next turn. And I think that's it. That's it for the things you need to do in order to not lose. Uh, so from here, you just fight whatever threats come out, come up, man. So this is my intro to, to Democracy 3. Do these things and you will win. Uh, I guess I'll, I'll, I'll play the game itself in, in a follow-up video, right? Okay. So let's, let's make a little cut right here. Um, you know what we should do is we should, we should draw a picture. Let's make this big and we'll, we'll draw with with a pencil would be like d is for democracy right so thanks for thanks for